Welcome back. It's sort of breakfast on Plus TV Africa and set for our first major conversation this morning uh, on the uh, structure and systems of uh, the Nigerian federalism. I'm glad to say we have joining us for the second time uh, in, a, in a couple of days. Um, even as we're still in the celebratory mode of Nigeria's independence anniversary, uh, Oludare Alin Laja, he is the CEO, is the chief executive officer of uh, Oludare Akin Laja, uh, Research and Development Company. I'm sorry, uh, Oludari Akin Laja. Uh, thank you very much for joining us this morning on The Breakfast. And uh, good morning to Oludari Akin Laja. Thank you. It's great to be here. All right. uh, it's great to be here again. It's good to see you again today. Fantastic. <laughs> Fantastic. All right. When, when you hear, um, you know, structure and systems of Nigerian federalism, what comes to mind? Um... Um, think, basically, it's just how we are designed as a nation to function. So um, every time you hear the word structure or system, it just simply means that uh, a nation where a group of people, different ethnicities, different languages, different ideologies, uh, different, different um, and, uh, cultures, okay? So how, how have they chosen to exist or cohabit together? How have they chosen to carry out their business, to carry out their uh, 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 or their individual endeavor, or, you know, based on their community, how have they chosen to carry that out? So that's what I think about every time I hear structure and systems. Mm. All right. And uh, what, what, what is your thought on the current yeah. uh, structure of Nigeria? I mean, we hear the word mm. being banded about uh, federalism, restructuring rather, especially as it yeah. your concerns of upcoming elections, uh, politicians are being asked, are you for restructuring or against restructuring? Yeah. What are your thoughts on the the federation as it currently is structured? Okay, so when... I, I would always like to answer it from my point of comfort, okay, my place of expertise. So if you're a consultant and you go to a business and they tell you the business is not uh, making money, for instance, or the business is not, uh, is not able to produce or it's not growing based on their goals, the first question you want to ask is how are you structured? What is your mode of operation? How are you designed to function? So now looking at Nigeria, uh, looking at how, how diverse we are, looking at how complex we are as a country, um, it's important for uh, different organs of the country, different states, different local governments, different communities, to be able to design how they intend to grow based on their realities. As it is in Nigeria today, we, we really don't have some form of context with respect to growth. So let's do a quick case study. If you look at a state like Lagos, Lagos is different in its design, different in its structure, different in its administration compared to a state like um, um, Enugu, for instance, in the southeast, or Edo in the south-south, or, or Kwara, or Niger State in the north-central. Now, if you have these different forms of communities, different forms of, of existence, how then do you want to use a unilateral uh, strategy or unilateral policy in education, for instance, or in health, or in security, or in infrastructure, okay? You just give one unilateral policy and you expect these different regions to administer it the same way, okay? Now, it will be difficult for you to administer it the same way because the structure is different, the population is different. The cultural behavior of the people in those communities are different. So all these things are very important in designing structures. So I think Nigeria must begin to see uh, the need to allow each state grow according to its pace, allow each state administer resources based on its context. As a development consultant, you must understand context. You must understand how policy must be placed into context based on many factors. So Nigeria is diverse, and we must begin to consider how do we uh, administer these our resources or our policies based on the context of these different communities. In simple terms, that's what I call restructure. Restructure has nothing to do with greed, or maybe somebody wanting to have allocation in the state come to. No, we are different. How do you want to drive a unilateral policy based on our differences? Mm. All right, interesting. Uh, um, you've talked about, you know, uh allocation of resources and um, resource control, let's call it that. But you've also talked about yeah. um, administrative structure. 
Um, yeah. it, could, it could be argued uh, that, that the current state of affairs or the structure of the country really does not stop states from you know, coming up with their policies. I mean, we have yeah. state governments. Um, if you're looking at maybe a health policy, for instance, we have state ministries of health that are allowed to come up with their policies. Nobody stops them. You know, we have commissioners of health. We have even, even when you talk about the Center for Disease Control uh, and Epidemic Response, you have state you know, uh, uh, you know, agencies for that. Uh, so, yeah. I mean, the states are allowed, it could be argued, to come up with their policies. Um, if you look at yeah. maybe education sector, for instance, uh, basic education, you have the local governments, you know, uh, secondary education, the state governments, they have their, their calendar, the governors are able to say, oh, this is when or the government says this is when the school you know, session starts and when it ends. They run their own universities yeah. as well. I mean, the federal government only yes, looks sir. at maybe federal colleges and the, the federal universities in the country. So will it be fair to yeah. say that um, the states are not given ample uh, space administratively to run their affairs? So now, the question is, how, how, how are resources allocated to the state? Okay, for a state like Lagos, maybe Lagos is not a perfect example because Lagos is, is an economic hub. So Lagos can generate its own resources independent of a federal location, for instance. Lagos state can uh, go ahead to do certain things it needs to do uh, without federal government input. But the truth is, if you look at it critically, no matter what the state wants to do, who is going to, who is going to finance it? <laughs> who is going to finance what the state wants to do? So on one hand, you say you're giving the state independence to to drive its project and to drive its resources and to drive what it wants, but you are still going to allocate resources to that, okay? And in the issue of politicking, you know, politicking will still play, okay? Um, with whose party is in power, uh, that determines the amount of access you can have to certain resources, to do certain things you want to do. So at the end of the day, states are still going to be put under the pressure of the federal system because how are we going to get resources to push this project that we want to do, even as states, for instance? The federal government will still have to allocate, and he who pays the bills or who 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 plays the uh, how, how does that say go? He who plays the piper will always determine the tune. <laughs> All right. So that's what I mean by yes, by states really on paper. Okay, you look like you're the ones allowed to administer it, but you still will have to go back to the federal government or go back to the federal government to get resources to do what you want to do at the state level. So how much independence do you really have? Hmm. Okay, uh, um, so is there a similarity between what you're talking about and the concept of devolution of powers? Yes, there is. So, so this is it. This is this is the this is the what I call it. This is the fear, or this is the greed. Okay, so I would then agree with you on this. Now, this is the greed. So, state governments feel they don't have a lot of independence from the federal government. Then the state governments then say, why would the local governments not be independent from us when we are not really independent? Okay, so that's that's where you still have that that command and control uh, kind of structure that still takes place. So some state governors still control the local government structure. Don't want to allow like, local governments to have access to funds. They still want to be able to control what local government do and all that. So we have to devolve power because you really cannot get development until you are able to bring it to its barest minimum. And, and we need to stop being political about this thing. Nobody's trying to say, oh, that's one person. Because the Every decision we make in Nigeria is usually political, okay? Someone is afraid of being absorbed, uh, his authority being absorbed, for instance. So if a local government chairman can do things independent from a state governor without having to go to a state governor, the state governor starts saying, okay, what if he stops supporting me? You know, all that political uh, uh, control is what, is what is affecting how power can really be devolved. But whether we like it or not, local governments must be able to take charge of certain things, the roads, the schools, how much money do they really have to be able to get these things done? So whether we like it or not, whether it's a discussion we want to have now or later, we must have to devolve power to the least, to the bottom of, 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 of administration of our country. Local government, wards, councils, at every level, we must be able to do that across the board. All right, so we're talking devolution of powers and restructuring. Um, yeah. What, in your, your opinion, is a, is, a, is a perfect structure for Nigeria to adopt? So, so, so um, 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 
you, I'm sure you scientists are always careful of perfection of being perfectionist. When they hear perfect, like oh, so, no, no, so no, we, no, we can reward perfect. that. What, what is what is the right structure in your opinion for Nigeria to adopt? Yeah, what, what is the structure that can create some level of productivity and growth with respect to the way we are now? We should begin to because because um, I, I, I heard I heard um, I heard. Uh, a very smart man I admire a lot. He, he said something once. He said, how does the federal government want to tie a road in Benin, for instance, and somebody in Abuja is determining how the road is going to look like, is determining what kind of decisions to make with regards to that road. You don't understand that road. You, you, you might not even be from that area. You, you might not be able to understand the challenges of, of, of that road. So, so I'm thinking that more power should be given to the local government, Power should be given to states, and federal government should just uh, 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 serve as a balance or serve as somebody who makes sure or ensures uh, that, that these things are being carried out, so, which is the true federalism. And we have these things documented, okay? We have the 1979, we, ha we have it documented. But like I said, people are just being political. People are afraid of, of, of maybe outliers rising, okay? I, I don't know what local government you are from now. <laughs> Or but maybe your local government uh, uh, begins to become productive, for instance. You begin to do crazy innovation. So much money begins to come to your local government, and your state governor begins to say, do you want to outshine me, okay, as a local government chairman? Am I not your governor? Well, you know, so maybe people are afraid of people growing independent of a command and control system, okay? And that's why people do not want to. But we must allow local governments. Everywhere in the world, look at productive centers. The local governments have the strength going to the state government to administer and also to the federal government. So I think a bottom-up approach is going to be a very good structure to be able to drive development because this top-down structure we're talking about is really heavy and complex, okay? Because people, people okay, so, so for instance, there's an allocation for a fund, for instance, for, let's say, environment, and the federal government is giving, let's say, a billion dollars to administer. How is that fund going to be administered? Politics is going to come to play. Where a particular person is from, where the director of this is from, where the current person is from. So those funds will be disbursed based on some form of interest. Okay? So development will not be able to go across board like we intended to grow. So we must find a way where we can take this bottom-up approach from the local to the state and to the federal government. All right. Interesting. Uh, you're talking about a bottom-top approach from the local government to the state government. Uh, and to the federal government, um, it could be argued, and I'm, I'm sorry, I'm going to play the devil's advocate a bit more. Uh, <laughs> yeah. That that because I'm I'm looking for the the perfect structure. So uh, as it is now, you're you're looking more at devolution of powers uh, yeah. from the center. Um, mm. The current structure we have, the federal government, and then the 36 states and the FCT. Do we need to see mm. probably a rearrangement into, uh, you know, you know? Clearing out some states and then forming joining states and state to form probably maybe a larger province or you look at probably the um, uh, the regional arrangement like we had in the past before the civil war. Some point to the yeah. fact that the civil war was a point a turning point when after the civil war in order to make sure that the regional agitations do not emerge again uh, or erupt yes. again. You know they, they had to like do a divide and conquer divide and rule strategy. Um, so are mm. you looking at getting back to something like that? We have uh, larger units that can stand on their own because some have said hey, the reason we need uh, to have more power at the centre and the current arrangement where uh, the government sh you know, handles the the, uh, the national resources on behalf of the states is for equal redistrib redistrib redistribution sorry of, of the resources yes. to the states that are not able to stand on two legs if you want to you know, call yeah. it that. Yes. But the truth is, if, if we want to be sincere with ourselves, there's no state in Nigeria that doesn't have the capacity to produce or generate growth at a level. We are just carried away, maybe with, with the size. If you go to the United States of America, for instance, there's no, you can compare the economy of California, for instance, with the economy of maybe Delaware or the economy of, of, of somewhere else, okay? Because each state knows what its strength is. And these are the things that drive migration, okay? So if I'm in a particular state and I think that the state is not able to achieve or to be, be able to meet my ambitions and I go to another state. So uh, I think for too long we have politicized this thing. Whether we like it or not, if you don't allow a person to think, if you don't allow a person to drive his own growth, how do you think the person can perform? You see, and we're giving excuses for things. 
so for instance, we, we don't even have to devolve powers because I see people who also argue for state police and community policing. Now, so if we're not even uh, sure whether we can comfortably drive that with respect to trust, issues or maybe culture and we're not sure whether people will not take advantage of that let's even start economically okay let's start let's start doing it economically let's allow states manage a bigger percentage of their resources and send a percentage to the federal government we can start from there okay then see how we build and grow at it so i think the regional structure worked and as a as a, as a consultant if if a strategy worked and brought some level of development why did you, we have to change it? But of course, you have said why it was changed, okay? But let's just go back to how it was before, and let's monitor growth. And you see, you keep tweaking as we go. What happens in the Western world, which you don't but, know? But, 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 you know, you know, yeah. you know, sorry to, to interrupt, but that, that, that regional structure, you know, some have argued, you know, there was also, it had this form of oppression. You look at some mm. states where, you know, some regions where you had uh, a minority uh, 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 tribes where they didn't have any... And he say, some of these minorities in court were the ones that were uh, having the larger resources in terms of the emerging oil and gas um, sector at the time. And mm -hmm. if you look at the, the war, especially the, the clamor for, for secession in the New Republic in the Southeast, I mean, I, I lived in Portugal for many years. I know what the locals feel about the civil mm -hmm. war. Um, the mm -hmm. the, the Portugal people are called Sabo by their brothers from the Southeast. You know, in the mm. old eastern region, because they uh, took the side of the Nigerian forces and were able mm. to, that I think dealt a death knell um, to the agitation, yeah. the civil war from the southeast. Yeah. So, um, um, in the history is well documented that the people from Port Harcourt yes. felt that they were being colonized by their mm. brothers from the southeast, that everything about Port Harcourt has been taken over. In fact, recently, the governor of Imo State, Hupu Zodima, stared the hornet's nest. Again, by saying that uh, those from the southeast developed Port Harcourt and made it what it is. And if you go online, you see <laughs> hundreds, thousands of comments. You know, Port Harcourt people don't have a very pleasant memory of Experience. the years yes. before. Uh, you look at the languages in, 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 in the schools that were taught. Most of the, lang the language that was taught was from the southeastern part of the country. Um, yeah. Native languages were relegated. Uh, mm. They felt that there was this takeover mentality. They didn't have a say in in, yes. in their state. So yes. how do we how do we overcome these uh, these these you know challenges? These challenges <laughs> yes. If if we are talking yeah. about if we're talking about okay, let's look at the the so called geopolitical zones, which is actually doesn't exist anywhere in the constitution. It's <laughs> a, a creation of um, political you know. Uh, 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 lingo, you know, people just say yes. there's nothing in the constitution yes. that says geopolitical Allows for whatsoever. That. It doesn't exist. <laughs> yes. We've just created that doesn't. and now we're we are yes. dividing ourselves by ourselves. If we were to go with those six <laughs> geopolitical zones, even in the in the southwest or southeast or south south, how is it gonna run? Because there are disagreements amongst the no, different so, states. So, so, even within states, there's a uh, uh, in yeah, Anambra <laughs> North, Anambra Central, Anambra. go to Cross River State. Northern Central, yeah. District Central, they are, they are fighting as to who should be the governor of the state now. PDP has gone to pick Sandy yeah. or not. Okay, I'm just going to stop at that for, for you first. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. So, no, so, so, so I, 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 I also think that at some point we need to grow out of this because it, 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 it's really something that's very limiting. And, and, and as a researcher, you, 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 I always tell people that the culture of a people, the social behavior of a people... Uh, is more powerful than any development you want to bring. Because how people think, how people behave, how people interpret things, you'll be shocked. It's a limitation to whatever growth or productivity you want to bring. Now, the reason I went to a regional, a regional uh, 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 structure is because that has worked. But if you and I take a poll, for instance, we do some survey or some analysis, and this is where Nigeria must begin to get this done. We can't do anything without research. We can't do anything without without understanding our environment. Go, go and ask, how are these people feeling? What are their agitations? What, what are their, what, what was creating this, this, this kind of, of, of mistrust? And that's what the former government of um, His Excellency Golok Jonathan did the national confab. Now, whether you like it or not, people spoke against that, it was expensive, it was loud. But for the first time in a very long time, a group of people came together and said, the way we are existing, you know, the way we coexist, 
does not suit us. This is how we think we should coexist. Uh, so I think we need to go back to that document, understand it and read through it. Most of these things you are talking about might have been stated in those documents because people from most of these communities were represented. Okay, Whether they wanted people to represent them or not, people were represented. What were they asking for? Let's bring it up. Let's study it. Let's face our growth and development plan. We have to start to be a country that pays attention to research and data. This is what people spoke. What is the first thing we can implement? What is the second thing we can implement? Because you and I are sitting here and talking about things, and you are giving me data. See what you just spoke about and said about Port Harcourt. Many people don't know that this happens. So when you see the agitation, and some people say, we're not part of the agitation, and people get angry. You forget that there are underlining factors today. So we must go back to a policy document. What is the document that we have come together based on an agreement? How do we want to implement this? How are we facing it to implement it? And let's stop politicizing this thing. It's a required agitation. So when I spoke about the region, it's because that is what has worked based on where we were before. But okay. now, this you have said now is a new reality. But there is a document and a confab that was done in 2014 that speaks to most of these agitations. Where is that document? The question also to ask is why didn't Jonathan implement it before leaving? I mean, he had a golden chance. <laughs> I'm sure you know. <laughs> anyway, um, 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 some there's a school of thought, you know, that, uh, uh, and this is what I believe too, that, you know, if you restructure the country, it might be the, what is needed, but it will simply be restructuring Nigeria's problems. There are deeper seated mm. issues, issues of, uh, you know, this rent seeking welfare mm. system, issues of corruption, mm. issues of nepotism. Mm. Uh, lack of patriotism mm. and uh, people saying looking at looking into to the interests of their tribes more than to national mm. interests and you're simply mm. just going to take the larger problems and localize them. Mm. No, no, so 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 you agree with me that no matter what you think, there will still be problems. There will always be problems. Look at Ukraine and Russia. There will always be those problems of culture and the rest. But what advanced societies do is keep coming up with new ways based on study, based on research. And listen, whether you like it or not, if, as a consultant, too, if you have a big business and you unbundle it, it doesn't solve the problem, but it allows you to deal with the problem at a smaller level where you can collate results, where you can generate reference, where you can, where you can understand growth. Okay, because when it's too complex and too top-down heavy, I, spoke, I speak about wicked problems. If you're trying to solve one problem, another problem will be created. And I agree with all that. But we have to break them down into smaller units. And we begin to deal with them as smaller units. If you break them down into smaller units, I feel you will be able to deal with them better, understand what the limitations are, understand where the problems are at a smaller unit. See, when you look at it from this helicopter view, it's really, really complex. You have 500 and something uh, languages and 200 and something, uh, 500 and something ethnic groups how do you want to look at that from that from that view? I feel if you break them down into smaller units, the problems will not automatically go away. But what it has done is that it has been able to allow you to see how you can deal with them based on the context of the locality where it exists. That way we can create, uh, we can understand feedback, we can measure growth, right. we can measure, uh, uh, we can measure uh, uh, the things we are, because a lot of things we're talking about now, sir, is, is assumption. Because we're looking at it in a much more complex issue. But let's yeah. assume that's the problem in Portacot. <laughs> some people, are, some people are assume that the governors would, would be power drunk. I mean, if you look at uh, the, the issue of state, state policing, for instance. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. All right. We, we have to leave at that. Uh, we could go on and on and yeah. on. I mean, you brought your, yeah. your intellectual prowess as a researcher, you know, consultant to bear on this conversation. Uh, Oludare yeah. Akin Laja, thank you so much, uh, very much for your time this morning. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's right. great to be Appreciate here. Appreciate it. Oludari Akinlaja is the Chief Executive Officer of Oludari Akinlaja Research and Development Company in Lagos. We have a discussion on payment gateway services. You want to find out what that is about? We'll be right back after this break. Stay with us. <laughs>